It's day five of our December five day weight loss series and today I've got a total body burn for us. Grab your dumbbells and let's go. All right, killer bees, let's go ahead and get moving and groove and have your dumbbells completely out of the way and let's get started with some arm circles with high knees. You guys, welcome to the workout. I am Paula B. I'm your best middle-aged fitness friend. And around here, we are all about making peace with your menopausal body by finding a healthy weight and moving in ways that feels like self-love. And I think I did that wrong. Feels like self-love, but feel. Moving in ways that feel. My grammar, it's really good today. <laughs> What else feels like self-love though? Finding that healthy weight by using the 5-0 method, which means that we're doing five things every single day that make you say, oh, I never had any idea that weight loss could be this easy. You guys, every single day we eat the right number of calories, which is not necessarily less than you've been eating before. We drink the right amount of water, which is half your body weight in pounds in ounces of water. We get the right amount of sleep every night by going to bed at the same time, getting up at the same time, and not really worrying about how much of that in between was actual sleep. You guys, we exercise moderately every single day, which is not necessarily more than you were doing before. In fact, sometimes, sometimes it's a lot less. And my friends, we manage our minds every single day by finding our thoughts and deciding whether or not they're helpful because sometimes they're really not. <laughs> you guys, let's go ahead and do some arm crossers with booty kickers. I tell you what, the more I find my thoughts, the more I realize that there are lots of them running around in there that are not helping me at all to get me where I wanna go. And that's why around here I try to give you a nice helpful thought that can really get you where you wanna go. Today's helpful thought is this is what I am doing today. And I happen to love this one because it's one of those, it's one of those sentences that it's pretty specific, but it's also, you can turn it over in your mind and hear it in a couple of different ways that can be helpful in really different situations. For example, when you say, this is what I am doing today, it can really help ground you to the fact that this is where you are right now, this is what's going on, and this is what you were doing today. When you say, this is what I'm doing today, it can really remind you that what you're doing today isn't necessarily what you're going to be doing for the rest of your life. Let's go ahead and do some welcome to my homes because welcome to my home. You got it, Blossom? You doing okay? All right. <laughs> My friends, what we are doing today is what we're going to be doing more or less every day until we get our goals, but that's not necessarily what you're going to be doing forever. Thinking about the big picture, thinking about how if we are losing weight right now, how that's truly a temporary situation. It is not a life sentence. This is something that you are doing as a means to an end on your way to doing kind of whatever you want to do in the world, which is kind of amazing. And maybe what you want to do today, and maybe forever, is a little something called the total body burn of both cardio and strength. I've got the handy dandy gym boss here set for 30 seconds of work, 10 seconds of transition time in between, because we really are going back and forth. In fact, I truly prefer you to have like a table or a chair where you can put your dumbbells because we are going back and forth between cardio and strength. So let's go ahead and get started, in fact, with some big arm side shuffles giving myself a little bit of space over here. What we're going to do is shuffle to the side while making big arms right in front of us. Hence the name, you guys. If you are not new around here, actually, no, if you are new around here, let me just tell you something. I name the exercises either what they look like, what they remind me of, or I give them very silly names that has something to do with a childhood memory. When in doubt, when in doubt, I give them very odd names, especially the cardio ones. The strength moves, I do try to more or less give you a name that maybe you've heard of before because that's what we're gonna be doing next. Here's 10 seconds of rest. Go ahead and grab those weights because what we're doing is squats. That's, that's not really very silly, <laughs> it's just squats. I like to have my weights right here on my shoulder as we come down in squats. We're pushing our hips back, back, back before they come down, down, down. This is strength, which means that we're really thinking about moving with excellent form. We are not trying to move fast. This is not cardio anymore, I promise. Even though your heart rate won't stay up as high as it does with cardio, and even though you won't get any steps counted for this, this kind of slow moving brain body work, so good for you. So good for weight loss, so good for your health, so good for your fitness, so good Let's go ahead and put those down. Here's 10 seconds of rest. And coming up next, we're going to do low swinging heel digs, which means that our hands are swinging from side to side low, just meaning not going over your head. As we swing, we're tapping one foot out in front of us at a time in a heel dig. 
You guys, strength work to me is the hidden gem of exercise that lots of us maybe got to this point in our lives before we really started doing it. If you are like me, born in the 60s, grew up in the 70s and 80s, went to aerobics in the 90s, <laughs> then had kids and was like, wait, what? Maybe I'll go for a walk. <laughs> Strength work is the thing that all of us are missing. Here's 10 seconds of rest. What we're gonna do next is cross body crunches. Grab those dumbbells. You're gonna have your weights out to the, or you have your weights on your shoulders, elbows out to the side. Gonna bring your opposite elbow towards your opposite knee, crunching here in the middle. Now here's the thing about 30 seconds of intervals. We're not getting a ton of these done. It is meant to be slow. This isn't cardio, so don't worry. We're not doing a ton, but we are gonna come back to this whole circuit one more time. Wow, don't mind me and my balance. That we're gonna get plenty of work. The thing about strength work is that you don't actually get more out of it by doing more at a time. As you get stronger and fitter, you can increase your load, meaning you could, if you wanted to, increase your weights. Here's 10 seconds of rest, and coming up next, we're gonna do skiers. Hands going up and down in front of us, feet shuffling back and forth underneath us. You know, underneath us. If you can, we're going opposite hand, opposite foot. Don't worry about it if you're not. <laughs> Truly, sometimes the coordination of this one, a little bit beyond me. Do not worry about whether or not you're doing it right. You are doing it right if you are not getting injured. That is only my, that is truly the only caveat I have. If you are doing it in a way that does not injure you, then every single exercise you are doing perfectly, you guys. When it beeps, we're gonna get that 10 seconds of rest and then coming up next. We're doing something I call side leg raise press ups. Now here's why I was really specific rather than saying side kick, I want you to actually try and point your toe down as you raise your leg. Your opposite hand is going into a press up. So toe pointed down while you're raising that leg up to the side. Do you feel that work in your side butt? Oh my gosh, much more so than when I call it a side kick. And that's why I was really intentional. I want you to be intentional with your body as we move in ways that feel like self-love, <laughs> but as we move precisely and thinking about which muscle is squeezing, which place, what things are doing what, how our core is pulled in. That, my friends, the secret sauce. Here's 10 seconds of rest. Go ahead and put those weights down. Coming up next, we're doing cardio. Okay, we're doing dancing frogs, which means that we're doing a little Warner Brothers. Hello, my baby. Hello, my darling. I'm going to go ahead and just start it with it. It's almost, I, I do a little jazz hands with it. It's opposite hand, opposite foot kicking. It's, it's kind of a silly move, but it reminds me. Everybody has told me this. Michigan J Frog does this one on those old Bugs Bunny cartoons where he won't sing for anybody but the one guy. It's very silly. I don't really recommend that you go watch those old cartoons because speaking of things that didn't age well, things that are not appropriate anymore in today's day and age, here's 10 seconds of rest. Coming up next, we're doing deadlifts. Go ahead and grab those dumbbells. Whew, you're going to pull your core in tight. You're going to have your feet about hip width apart, maybe a little bit wider, depending on what feels comfortable for you. Push those hips back, 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 back. Pull them forward, 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 forward. As you are thinking about where your body is in space and time, my friends, this is what I was telling you. This is the secret sauce to getting fitter while you are losing weight. I know, I know that for some of us, we're like, Paula, I'm doing so much less exercise. I'm definitely losing fitness, my friend. The way to hang on to and or improve your fitness is to improve, here's 10 seconds of rest, your brain body connection. Doing things intentionally gives you more results. When it beeps again, we're doing butter kickers. Okay, so hands are doing butter churns. Hands going up and down right in front of your body. Lower body doing booty kickers. <laughs> I call these butter churns the hand motion, butter churns. Not because it's a childhood memory, not because it's anything. It reminds me of what a butter churn might look like if I'd ever done such a thing. I have no idea. <laughs> I don't even think people churn butter like this anymore. And in fact, if they do, I doubt that they have their elbows out this wide because the butter churns that I've seen, you would go more like this. But you know what? There you go. This is how my brain works, you guys. When it beeps again, we're doing high knee, high curls. Arms out to the side at shoulder height, palms facing up. As we bring up one high knee, oh, we're doing a biceps curl. Whew, 
little doggies with those hands out to the side. Make sure your core is pulled in nice and tight, thinking about intentionality, thinking about where your body is in space and time, thinking about using those big, big, big back muscles to hold your arms out wide. This isn't just your biceps doing this work, right? Do you feel that work in your back? Hopefully your upper back only, not your lower back. If you feel your lower back, drop your weights. And in fact, Time to put your weights down anyways. 10 seconds of rest here. You guys, coming up next. We're doing star bursts, which means that we're gonna get little and get big. It's not really a squat, but it could be. Get little, get big, get little, get big. As we get big, both hands come up, one leg comes out to the side. A little bit of balance work in our cardio here. A lot of high heart rate or moderate heart rate work because when we put our hands up, our heart rate comes up. So make this one work for you. This is a full body movement. If you need to go less squatting, less big hands on this one, bring it in a little bit smaller. Still a star burst, maybe a star pop instead of a big burst. Here's 10 seconds of rest. Coming up next, we're doing a step back twist. Okay. Weights are just right here at your shoulders, your waist, whatever feels comfortable. As we step back, we're twisting away from that step back leg. So we are challenging our balance while working our abs and obliques. I am taking this exceptionally slow because that step back, hands down the hardest, ah, uh, well, yeah, no, I'm gonna call it the hardest balance work for me. Stepping back, not something I do naturally, not something I do willingly, <laughs> except when we are here doing a step back. So it's something that my brain, here's 10 seconds of rest, doesn't have a lot of experience with. Coming up next, we're doing kick jacks. Kind of exactly what it sounds like. Your hands are doing jumping jacks, but your feet are going to be kicking. So of course, that means we have our hands up. That means your heart rate's coming up. My friends, I know when we're going back and forth like this, it can feel like, oh, my heart rate's not really up all that high. Yeah, but you're still putting in effort. That work that you are doing with weights, it doesn't show up quite as fast as cardio work because it doesn't bring your heart rate up right this second. But that cumulative effect will give you kind of shaky muscles, kind of sore muscles, kind of effort in your body that you don't always necessarily notice right away. Here's 10 seconds of rest. Coming up next, we're doing triangles. Weights right here at your middle feet, almost uncomfortably wide. We're gonna put one hand up overhead while the other one rolls right down the side of your leg wherever you can get to. I happen to be strong in this way. It's rare for me to be able to be this flexible with lateral motion like this, with having my hips open, but because my glutes and side glutes and hip muscles are pretty strong, I'm capable of this one. Wherever you can get to is what this exercise looks like for you. You guys, when it beeps again, we got 10 seconds of rest. Ha <laughs> ha, I like how that one worked out perfectly. I happen to be even on both sides. Coming up next, it's our last pair in this circuit. We're doing ding-dongs, which means that your hands are swinging one way while that same foot, wee, kicking out to the side. I could call these weeble wobbles because that, oh, that would be a childhood memory. I never got weeble wobbles. I wanted them so bad. We had little people, which was super fun, and I loved those. We had the schoolhouse, we had the bus, we had the house, we had the barn. So, so many little people, and my mom and dad, probably, I mean, I don't know if he had any decision-making power about our toys, but I suspect that they were kind of like, well, we're kind of all in on this and we really don't want another set of little things rolling around. Here's 10 seconds of rest and coming up nice. We're doing front raise, side raise, feet about hip width apart, core pulled in tight. Gonna raise one arm to the front while you raise the other arm out to the side. Make sure your core is pulled in because both hands, whoo, coming up to shoulder height in opposite directions means that your body is really working on stabilizing right now and that stability comes from your core. So my neighbors had weeble wobbles and I loved them. We used to always go over there and play, but my neighbors who had weeble wobbles and I've never really thought about it until right this second, didn't have little people. So they wanted to come to my house and play with little people. That's hilarious to me that it took me 50 years to recognize that it went both ways. You guys, 10 seconds of rest and let's start that circuit one more time. <laughs> You know how as a kid, you're so focused, we're doing big arm side shuffles right now. You know how as a kid, you're so focused on what you either have or don't have, generally speaking. I mean, you guys, our brains, we always focus on what we don't have. It's such a natural tendency. It's the grass is always greener sort of a situation. Your brain doesn't pay nearly as much attention to what you do have as what you don't. So all I'd ever thought about my childhood is what I didn't have. 
the weeble wobbles. But of course I did, as you just heard, here's 10 seconds of rest, have tons of little people. I had lots of toys. Okay, you guys. I just resolved some childhood drama in my head. Let's do squats now. <laughs> This is why, you know, sometimes it really does pay to revisit some of the stories that you've been telling yourself about your childhood or your young adulthood or, frankly, something that happened at work last week. There is almost always another way to think about it from somebody else's perspective that can really give you some insight into what your brain isn't paying attention to. By not paying attention to what I had, here's 10 seconds of rest, go ahead and put those dumbbells down, and focusing solely on what I didn't have, that wasn't a great childhood memory, and now it totally is. Hey, here's low, hang, low swinging heel digs. <laughs> You guys, truly, this is why I love, love, love doing mindset work. This is what I do as a life coach, which is pretty much my favorite thing in the whole entire world. I rethink old situations. I pay attention to what my brain has been offering me. I decide whether or not the thoughts that I have about them are helpful or unhelpful. And frankly, most of the time, they're not helpful. <laughs> that thought about the weeble wobbles, here's 10 seconds of rest coming up next is cross body crunches. I thought about the weeble wobbles wasn't helpful until it was. <laughs> Hands at your shoulders, elbows out wide. Oh my gosh, doing a cross body crunch and trying really hard not to fall over while we're doing it. But hey, you know what? If you do, go ahead and do whatever it takes to stay on your feet. If that means that you're not crunching quite as much in the middle, like you're just barely bringing your foot up off the ground, if that is where your balance and your strength is, that is what you are doing today. My friends, what you are doing today won't always be the same. Even if it is, relatively speaking, the same, it won't be the same intensity. It won't be the same way that you do things. Coming up next, we're doing skiers. Your body is always changing and you are always, as we discussed yesterday, making changes. You, even though even though you think you're doing the same thing, even though I think I'm doing the same thing, we are changing in lots of ways that because our brain is always focused on what we don't have, we don't notice what we do. What you have right now is a phenomenal amount of fitness. What you could have in the future is even more, even better, even thinner, even fitter, even stronger. 10 seconds of rest. Coming up next, we're doing that side leg raise, press up. So point that toe down just a little bit so that you can really feel that work right there, right on the side of your hip. And it means, I mean, for me, really specifically, it means that my leg is not coming up nearly as far as it would if I was doing like a side kick. A side kick, my leg, well, it wouldn't be all that, that far, but it would be up significantly higher. Pulling the work from that particular part of my hip really changes the, the width of this motion. Making sure your core is pulled in nice and tight. Thinking about excellent form, thinking about your brain body connection, putting those weights down for 10 seconds of rest. Coming up next, we're doing those Michigan J frogs, those dancing frogs, which I, geez, for copyright purposes, I should probably just refer to as dancing frogs. <laughs> I'm not going to sing too much more. These are the things I worry about here on YouTube. You know, I got to be careful about what I say and how I say it and whether or not I sing. It's why, it's why I don't do music in every single one of my videos, you guys, because even when, even when I go through all the proper channels, for example, last month I had a video that I went through all the proper channels. I pay for the music that I put on them. Here's 10 seconds of rest. Go ahead and grab those dumbbells. We're going to do deadlifts next. I had somebody make a copyright claim. So now, so now I'm not making money on that one particular workout. Here we go with deadlifts. Push those hips back, back, back and pull those hips forward, forward, forward. Copyright law is tricky. It's very, very tricky on public videos like this on which a person you know, can make money. And, and really specifically here on YouTube, this is not related to fitness in any manner, but really specifically here on YouTube, there's no real arbitration process for simply making a claim on somebody else's video. It's very interesting to me. Here's 10 seconds of rest. Coming up next, we're doing butter kickers. Hands are doing butter turns. Lower body is doing booty kickers which is just such a silly one. I love this motion because it feels 
not unnatural, they all kind of feel unnatural, but it feels very awkward to me. And I love working on awkward movements because it means that my brain hasn't really formed that brain-body connection. I actually love discovering movements that feel really weird to me for that exact reason. Because then, when you are keeping your brain young and supple by learning new things, here's 10 seconds of breath coming up next, we're doing those high knee, high curls. It's actually, I mean, it's one of the ways to stay younger, longer, by asking your brain to do something that it doesn't normally do. Here's those high knee, high curls, thinking about pulling your core in, really thinking about your center of gravity right there in your center as you are challenging it from three different directions. Do you feel that work? right there, like right above your hip bones, right in the center of your body, that, I mean, obviously in your back muscles too, but, but right there in your center of your body is where you are grounding yourself. That's where your power is coming from. Go ahead and put those dumbbells down for 10 seconds of rest. Okay, coming up next. You guys, we're getting there. We got star bursts or star pops, whatever works for you. I don't know why I only did one hand on that one. <laughs> I was, I don't know what that was actually. <laughs> Speaking of awkward movements that my brain wasn't quite ready for. <laughs> this, this is the tricky part, you guys, if you are new around here. This is the tricky part about following along with me is because sometimes even I don't know what I'm doing. And that is, that is me modeling for you and normalizing the fact that there is nothing about this workout that needs to be perfect for it to be a perfectly good workout. When it beeps again, we're doing those step back twists. You never, ever, ever have to be per perfect, my friends, because this imperfect <laughs> is what you were doing today. Step back and twist. Ah. And this is what I am doing today. Kind of helps me, oh golly, when it's something that maybe I don't wanna do, it kind of reminds me that this is just a moment in time this is, what I, this is actually what I really like about this being, for me, a very helpful thought. If it doesn't resonate with you or if it doesn't feel good to you, because that is how we know whether or not a thought is helpful, if it feels meh, it's kind of a meh thought for you. When it beeps again, we're doing kick jacks. Put your dumbbells down. Um, when, when you find a thought that feels good, that's how you know that it is a good thought because it feels good, that means it's helpful for you. When you find a thought that's just kind of like, well, that's interesting, it's kind of, doesn't really resonate with me, you don't have to take it in. I happen to like this one because, because I can really chew on it. It means a lot of different things in a lot of different situations, and I really like that because then, when it's vague enough for my brain to like be curious about it, like, well, what do I mean? How can I apply that in this situation? Here's 10 seconds of resting. Coming up next, we're doing triangles. When, when your brain automatically rejects a thought, really specifically, for example, this is what happens sometimes with affirmations. Your brain will like automatically reject it. Like, no, as a matter of fact, I'm not happy <laughs> with, with my life and all the abundance or whatever, like whatever your affirmation is. But when you can find a thought that's just kind of like, well, okay, this is what I'm doing today. I mean, obviously this is what I'm do doing today because this is what I'm doing. <laughs> like, this is what I'm doing right now. But then when your brain can find evidence of why that's a good thing, like this is what I'm doing only today. This is a, a moment in time, or this is what I'm doing today, and I might be able to do more tomorrow or the next day or next week. Go ahead and put those dumbbells down, my friends. It's our last pair of exercises, last cardio, last strength. We're doing ding-dongs or weeble wobbles, which is now a very happy childhood memory. I had something. My friend had something. We both enjoyed playing at each other's houses, and that's super fun. <laughs> also, this exercise, Super fun. <laughs> it's something that I am enjoying doing today. That's the other part about that thought. That's part of why I find it to be very helpful is because I can add on to it. It is not in and of itself necessarily the whole thought. Here's 10 seconds of rest coming up next. We're doing front raise, side raise. Your brain can find something else that goes along with it that also feels really good. This is I know, this is, I know this is very different for lots of you. If you are new around here, this kind of mindset work, this kind of thinking about what you're thinking, it doesn't seem like it might be related, but I swear it is. 
we just don't realize how much we are talking to ourselves about all, all everything, about your body, about your habits, about what you're eating, about your weight, about your life, about your exercise. We have so many thoughts that as soon as we start examining them, here's 10 seconds of rest, because you guys, we are done. Not quite finished, here it comes. We're doing a finisher of Drinky Birds with an oblique crunch. I'm gonna start on my left leg. A Drinky Bird is a single leg deadlift. We're just gonna tip forward while your back leg comes up back behind you. As we come up, bringing those hands up to your shoulders and bringing that knee out to the side. It is, if you can, one motion. It's a Drinky Bird. Oh, where you kick the glass cabinet behind you. And <laughs> If you need to tap down, please do. An oblique crunch. Oh my gosh, can I? I'm gonna tip to the side a little bit so that I hopefully don't kick that again. When it beeps, of course, we've got 10 seconds of rest. I'm gonna go ahead and come up nice and slowly. And then we're gonna switch sides and I'm gonna try really hard not to kick that behind me when I go the other way. Here we go. Final one, final interval. Coming down into that drinky bird. And then up really wobbly into that oblique crunch, my friends. Being wobbly does not mean anything about you as a human being. It means <laughs> that this is what you are doing today. <laughs> Frankly, sometimes my balance is better than this. Sometimes my balance is worse than this. This is what I'm doing today. Oh my gosh, that was so perfect. Go ahead and put those dumbbells down. I'm gonna turn off the timer. We're gonna cool it down. Okay, you guys, this is not off yet, hang on. There it is, okay. <laughs> Let's do some arm circles <laughs> with some Robert Palmers down here with our feet, just relaxing into this cool down because that was amazing. You got a total body burn. We got our cardio done. We got our strength done. We are on our way to all of our weight loss goals, you guys. You guys, this was day five of our five day weight loss series and tomorrow you can start it all up again with day one. This is meant to be repeatable all month long or or if you'd like to, I have a lot of videos, <laughs> like a lot. I do a series like this every month in the new year. I've got more coming. This, this is what we do today and every day. And I'm so, so grateful that you're here with me. Let's go ahead and open it up. Oh, get that nice stretch in your chest. Ah, and then we'll close it up. Give yourself a hug and a nice pat on your sweaty back. You guys, thank you so, so much for working out with me this day, this week, this month, this year, this, not quite a millennium. I've only been on YouTube since 2013, but <laughs> this past, Gosh, this past eight years? That's insane, right? That's a lot. I love it. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. No matter what you do tomorrow, you guys, make sure you subscribe before you go, and I'll see you tomorrow.